Hi, I'm Stan Schneider. I'm CEO of RTI. So a lot of people just like to ask us, you know, what does your product do? It fundamentally allows you to connect many things to other things and really share information. DDS works a little bit differently. It has essentially think of you have an array of data that's local to you and you can write to your array and what DDS does when it gets something here, it'll take it and send it to everybody else who's interested in it. And they'll also have their own little local array of data. And so when you're using it, it looks like you're just writing to your local world, but in reality it's connecting you to tens or hundreds or thousands or even millions of other different things. And it gets a little bit more complicated because you can't send the same information to 10,000 nodes. You've got to be judicious about what you send where, and it's very smart about doing that. And so what is that really good for? That's really, it's also blazingly fast, okay? It may sound like it's slow because you've got these buffers. You don't, it doesn't really buffer it. You write it in there and it sends it immediately. It just happens to keep a copy of it. Um, but you can then take that technology and build a single system that looks like it's all working together, works as a single uh, working thing. And, you know, our, our sort of Sweet spot is high performance machine control, you know, big systems, the Grand Coulee Dam, the uh, cars that can drive themselves, planes that can fly themselves, all those things where you have a lot of intelligence with high performance physics also is, is really where the technology came from. But it's now extending to be much more broad than that across things. We just uh, got a deal to air traffic control for Canada. Air traffic control for Canada is a, you know, it's a great analogy because while you do have a local problem with collision detection and dealing with landing coordination at the airport, you also want to be able to talk across the continent and make sure that the planes don't show up so you're overloaded three hours from now. It's high intelligence things. There's wide area communication. There's short communications. You can't flood any one operator with the 50,000 things flying in the air. You just want to tell them things like I'm landing control for Toronto Airport. I want to see planes that are within five miles below 5,000 feet descending and coming towards me. And it's smart enough when that's in your array, that's all you've asked for. It won't send you the 50,000 other planes. It'll just send you the ones that are fit that specification and keep all that other traffic off the network. And for a single application, you see how much that takes it down. If you have thousands of nodes or operators and things like that, you can just imagine it, take, it cuts the load on the network down by orders of magnitude. It's just a really important thing to be able to do. Um, so, you know, we've, technology has grown a lot over the years. We've gone from sort of being able to handle just the local area to uh, we have a technology called routing, lets you take those things and, and connect them into hierarchies of, of data buses. We call it a data bus and hierarchies of hierarchies of data buses and all the way up into the cloud where you can do cloud kinds of uh, interactions between pieces and connect it together. Uh, there's other kinds of protocols out there also. Internet of Things is huge, huge means there's lots of complexity out there and lots of different technologies. Uh, routing service also allows you to plug in little adapters that you can connect to MQTT or AMQP or all the other kinds of things out there that make it uh, possible to build a really difficult system. So, you know, if you really want to build if, you, if, you, if you're thinking about whether you need to use a high-performance middleware uh, and you don't know which technology to pick, I, I, ask, I, I, would, I would ask you to ask yourself three questions. And the first question is, how reliable does that be? What are the consequences of going down for five minutes? The consequences of five minutes are people are going to get killed or the system is going to completely fail. You should check that box. The second one is, what is performance to you? If you measure it in less than seconds or you measure it in scalability that's larger than thousands or hundreds at least, check that box. And lastly, how long does this software have to last? I, I didn't get to talk here about the difficulty of evolving a system like this over time, but it's very hard to evolve a system like this over time, and DDS specializes in being able to modify types and add in new pieces of technology and things like that. So if you're t the, you check that box if your system, your software has to last for more than three or five years. If you checked all three boxes, you need to use our technology. If you haven't checked them all, if you check two of the three, you probably do. If you check one of the three, you probably don't. It's, it's really that simple. <laughs>